Many thanks for the introduction. I will indeed show a bit of our work where we've been applying uh, imaging mass spectrometry to characterize the uh, microenvironment of cancers, uh, with a particular focus on interactions between immune cell um, and tumor cell. Um, I will start by acknowledging the people that are actually doing the work. Uh, Marika Eiseltine is a PhD student that set up uh, the imaging mass spectrometry panel for FFPC issues at the LMC. And Antonio Somaracas has developed a number of image analysis tools that will be discussed in this presentation. Uh, we also work in close collaboration with the groups of Chris Boning, who has really been instrumental uh, in bringing this technology to the LMC, um, and Valdivine Lelicel, who has the Division of Imaging Process uh, at the LMC. Um, so, why focus on cancer microenvironments, uh, and in particular in uh, the immune cell component of cancer microenvironments? Um, it is now well accepted that the quantitative and qualitative composition of the immune cell compartment in the tumor is a major determinant of clinical behavior, with the presence of different immune cells being associated with either uh, improved or worse clinical outcomes, uh, depending on which uh, immune cell subset you're looking at. Um, and there's really been a renewed interest in cancer immunology in the last decade. Um, as a result of the successful development of therapeutic antibodies targeting co-inhibitory uh, receptor in T cells, like the ones mediated by uh, PD-1 and CPLA-4 receptors. Um, these therapies have been particularly successful in tumors with a strong immunogenic profile, um, which is connected to the accumulation of large numbers of somatic mutations throughout the genome. Uh, the elevated number of mutations then translates to increased life uh, that T cells will be able to identify and eliminate uh, tumor cells. Accordingly, what you also see is that tumors with more mutations are generally more densely infiltrated by T cells, and in particular by uh, CD8 positive T cells. Um, the determinants of response, however, are not limited to mutation burden and infiltration by T cells, uh, as it can be deduced by the fact that only a minority of patients. Uh, with theoretically immunogenic tumors are currently responding to checkpoint blocker therapies. Um, in fact, as depicted in the cancer immunogram put forward by some of our colleagues at NCI, uh, together with Anthony Rebus, another model that in the meantime uh, has been proposed, uh, there's really a myriad of mechanisms at play that influence immune responses to immune therapy and which need to be considered uh, that include the presence and functional state of other immune cell subsets than just T cells or cytotoxic T cells. Um, so it has been very exciting to see throughout the years how technology has evolved and made it possible to look deeper into tumors and to multiple features simultaneously. Um, by both methods, in particular with both RNA sequencing, we can assess transcriptional programs of cancer. And groups have developed tools to inform uh, on immune cell composition of tumors based uh, on these data. Um, however, such analyses are restricted to averages or approximations of immune cell composition and do not really allow for the investigation of complex genotypes, uh, and certainly not at single cell level. Um, more recently, um, single cell sequencing and other single cell technologies have really been a, a major breakthrough in the sense that they provided us with the ability to characterize in detail uh, the phenotypes but also genetic features. Uh, However, um, one must not forget that such techniques does not include uh, the spatial contexture of the cell, and there are bias associated uh, to our ability to retrieve certain immune cell subsets from tissue, um, particularly when we're talking uh, about solid tumors. It can be quite challenging to retrieve all subsets that are contained within the tumor microenvironment. And so, to address these insufficiencies. Um, it is fundamental that we can make use of multiplex imaging technologies that not only inform on the phenotype of the cell, uh, but also their location within the tissue and the cellular contacts they're inserted in. Um, several groups, like the ones, for instance, Jerome Gallon with Immunoscore, have now demonstrated that uh, different tumors can carry the same amount of T cells, for instance, uh, but their differential localization can have profound clinical implications which would not be picked up. Uh, by a method uh, that ignores uh, spatial context. Uh, we are therefore very lucky that we can make use uh, of an imaging mass spectrometry instrument that we'll see where the parallel detection of several antigens can be done simultaneously uh, by making use of heavy metal labeled uh, antibodies. So, 
in the past years, uh, we've been working very hard to set up a panel of around 40 markers. Uh, and the description of this process was published at the end of last year. Uh, we went ahead with labeling each and every clone that was probably previously tested by us by Stanford in Immunity Chemistry. Uh, and this is because we wanted to have the flexibility to combine specific antibodies uh, with particular metal caps. Um, and during this process, uh, we realized a few important things. First, that a mixture of 40 antibodies did not perform very well in one go, and that antibodies also perform best in different conditions, different types of antibodies. Uh, to address these two issues, we made use of uh, two sequential incubation steps, one uh, overnight at 40 degrees and the other at room temperature, and we distributed the antibodies by these two conditions according to their performance, and thereby also splitting the total amount of antibodies per two incubations. So our current panel includes a number of immune cell lineage markers, so it has been updated since the, the publication of our paper. It includes a number of immune cell lineage markers, uh, differentiation and activation markers, um, immunomodulatory molecules, including therapeutic targets, some signaling molecules, and finally, and also very importantly, some structural markers that allow us to map the tissue for the different components as well to distinguish epithelial from stromal layers. Um, we make use of a number of in-house developed tools, uh, as well as tools that are publicly available for the processing of the data. So we start with inspecting the quality of the antibody signal with the MCD viewer, and if that looks good, we develop cell mass and perform background subtraction by making use of cell profile and, uh, and elastic. Uh, we then transform this uh, imaging data into a per cell matrix that is used as an input for cytosol, where with TSNA-based uh, dimensionality reduction, we identify cell clusters uh, that can correspond to cell subsets. Um, the biological validation of such subsets and further analysis are then conducted uh, with imatide. Just to give you an example, um, with imatide we can inspect the presence of a particular cell cluster in the, in the mass uh, that we apply to the images and evaluate whether that cluster has indeed the morphology and distribution that was uh, expected. Um, so a tumor cell should look like a tumor cell, a myeloid cell, like a myeloid cell, and a lymphocyte cell, uh, like uh, a lymphocyte. Um, a lot of our work focuses on chloride cancer. Um, and you can divide chloride cancers in four major molecular subsets according to their transcriptional file profile, where you have a group that shows high immunogenicity and consequent infiltration by factor immune cells, the TMS1 type, uh, the TMS2 and 3, which are subsets characterized by very poor immune cell infiltration and driven by wind and MIC activation and metabolic dysregulation, respectively. Uh, and a fourth subtype, which does demonstrate some type of inflammatory process going on, uh, but the microenvironment is largely dominated by a DGP that's stromal signature. So we wanted to know whether we could see such transcriptional profiles reflected on the analysis that we conducted with uh, imaging mass spectrometry. We processed some samples by this methodology, uh, and through uh, and through the analysis approach that I explained before, we defined the following clusters where I confess we adopted a rather conservative approach to avoid defining uh, too many subsets. Um, so we identified, for instance, 21 tumor cell clusters, uh, 13 uh, different lymphocyte cell clusters, 14 myeloid clusters, 8 uh, strobal subsets, and, and seven types of cells, which we cannot really give a easy biological meaning uh, to those. Um, so despite being rather conservative, we thought this number of subsets uh, already gave a nice structure and complexity to the data set um, to perform uh, sequence analysis. Um, so some of the findings were not very surprising, namely that T cell infiltration, particularly by activated cytotoxic T cells, is really a hallmark of PMS1 type, um, but perhaps a bit more surprising uh, is the fact that such immune reaction is accompanied by a very profound infiltration by granulocytic immune cells, and we still really have to understand uh, what is the meaning of their presence and how they intervene in the context of checkpoint blocker therapy, uh, for instance. Um, and one of the coolest things uh, of this technology, in my opinion, is our ability to distinguish 
uh, tumor-associated myelodysplasia, namely different flavors of macrophages, monocytes, dendritic cells, which I think is quite challenging to do with other technologies, not with single cell technologies. And it's really nice to see in the images the complexity, uh, or we know that these subsets are really complex, and it's very nice to see in the images, indeed, uh, all these different shades uh, of myeloid cells, which have not always been captured uh, with previous uh, uh, with previous uh, approaches. Finally, it is also extremely interesting to study how the accumulation of immune cells um, associates the features of tumor or stromal cells, for instance, the relation between immune cell infiltration uh, and the presence of TGF-beta-related uh, molecules in the microenvironment. An additional bonus uh, of the multiplex technologies uh, is that it also allows you to discover things like that, and stuff that you were not really able to immediately explain based on current knowledge, like it is the case when we find stuff that through the combination of markers that were not anticipated to go together. And here, of course, you, you run the chance of uh, uh, being looking at artifacts, so you, one really needs to make sure uh, we validate whether these subsets are really meaningful in distinguishing uh, a true immune cell uh, population. Uh, but once we see that these are typical uh, particular subtypes of colorectal cancer, we think there might be an interesting biological meaning in that. Um, finally, the imaging also allows us to, to investigate in depth uh, what is the relation between all cells that have been, that have been identified uh, and whether differences in the spatial arrangement of cell subsets also play a role uh, in pathogenesis. Um, and this is a glimpse of what we've been doing in addition to numerous projects uh, that are currently ongoing um, in the combination with the clinic to try to extract information that is valuable in different tumor types, and particularly in the context of checkpoint blocking uh, uh, treatments of cancer patients that are undergoing immunotherapy. Um, in the coming years, we will probably be working very hard on the integration of data that is derived from different multiplex platforms, and we think that IMC can really play an important role in, for instance, supporting the mapping back of single-cell data, or the, the mapping of single-cell data uh, back uh, to tissue. Um, and I'll finish uh, my presentation here the same way I started, by acknowledging the people that are actually doing the work, and I'm more than happy. Uh, to answer uh, questions that might come my way. Uh, thanks. Thank you, Noel, for your informative presentation. We will now start the Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. So let's get started. Let's see what we have for questions. We have quite a few questions coming in. We'll start with our first question. Have you been using IMC for other purposes than immune oncology? Um, yeah, so the lab has, has been employing imaging mass cytometry uh, in other projects as well. Um, basically, any setting that requires the use of multiple markers uh, to assess a phenotype of a cell. So, for instance, we also have uh, a project that is focusing on signaling. And there, what we have built is a panel that is mostly constituted by phospho. Uh, uh, specific uh, antibodies to, to study signaling uh, uh, in tumors. Our next question, how do you see the integration of single cell sequencing with IMC going forward? Yeah, so as discussed in the, in the presentation, um, there are some advantages to using single cell technologies and others to using imaging, uh, imaging mass cytometry. But in the lab, we also see both as highly complement, com complementary. So what we've been trying to do is to project um, the single cell sequencing data on gene expression back uh, uh, to the images. 
And what we do is you use common markers between the single cell data and the imaging data. And you determine the probability that a certain cell from single cell sequencing belongs uh, to a certain part of the tissue. And this is easier to be done if there are some common markers, for instance, in the setting of site seq, where you could use the same antibody that you use for IMC as that you use for, for, for site seq. Um, and these are attempts to try to increase uh, the amount of information we can get from a cell by joining uh, these gene expression profiles um, or um, with, with their spatial localization. Thank you, Noel. Our next question, do you develop the analysis pipeline yourself, a custom solution, or use something that is commercially available? Yeah, so for the cell masks, um, for creating cell masks and for determining what's real signal and what's background signal, uh, we use uh, uh, tools that are, that are available like Cell Profiler uh, or Elastic. But we are lucky enough that we have a division of image processing in the, at the LEMC, and that's a research group on itself. So we're very lucky to be able to, to rely on those guys to develop solutions for the analysis of data. Um, but there are also tools uh, which are available off the shelf for the processing of IMC data, like the ones developed by the Boda Miller lab, like Histocat, for instance. Okay, thank you. Is IMC applicable to other tissue types or just for FFPE? Um, it really shouldn't matter. Um, so we also use uh, imaging mass cytometry panels on uh, snap frozen tissue. Uh, what one has to uh, to realize is that um, the, the the panel of antibodies will not be the same for FFP um, and for frozen tissue, uh, and that has to do with the availability of the antigens. Uh, so, for instance, if you're used to use applications like flow cytometry. Uh, if you want to use the same clones, those will be more likely to work on, on frozen tissue. Uh, while for FFP, well, you probably have to, to select uh, a number of specific clones that will only work on FFP and not on frozen tissue. Okay, wonderful. Well, it looks like that's all the time we have today. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Noel D. Miranda, for your time today and your important research. Before we go, I'd like to thank our audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Oh, we just got one more question that just came in. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to I'm going to go off the rails and ask this question. This is an important question. Are the metal conjugation kits easy to work with? Did I pronounce that correctly? Are the metal yeah, conjugation so kits? Okay, sorry. Conjugation, yeah. Conjugation. So okay, thank you. Um, we do all the labeling ourselves, um, so we had to rely heavily on the conjugation kits. I think it's quite straightforward to use. I mean, uh, as everything in the lab, it requires a bit of accuracy and uh, it takes a bit of time, but it's, it's quite straightforward. You should be able to easily do it yourself. It's just following a, a protocol. And of course, you need to get the antibodies on a special formulation because they cannot have stuff like BSA or other proteins. Otherwise, we'll be labeling those rather than the antibody itself. Okay, great. Again, thank you again, uh, Dr. Miranda, for your time today and for your important research. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions that we did not have time for today and those that are submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by our speaker via the contact information you provide at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand through July 2021. Until next time, be safe, everybody. Have a great day and goodbye.